My name is Sammy Cannell, and I'm the Associate Director of In the Body of the World. Uh, I am so excited to be here with these two uh, amazing women. Uh, as Eve said, Susan Celia Swan uh, is the Executive Director of V-Day uh, and has known Eve since 1997. Is that right? Wow. Uh, and Perva Pende Coleman is the Program's uh, Leader Director uh, and uh, has, has known Eve since 2005. <laughs> Um, and uh, I know both of you have seen the show before tonight and uh, are obviously with Eve all the time and have, were very much a part of her story, but I'm, I'm curious about your experience watching it uh, tonight. Um, we always like to start these conversations by asking people what, what resonated for you um, uh, and, and were there moments that in particular stood out to you as you were watching tonight? Well... I have to say I haven't seen the show in a couple of weeks and I felt like tonight I really relived <laughs> that with Eve, having been with Eve through part of it. Um, and I could, what she said at the end there about the audience, I felt like everybody was in it together tonight in a way that is just um, so powerful and I think you see in Eve's work, um, but with this piece. Um, it somehow, it just, it resonates across her life, our lives, and the story that's being told in the body of the world that just, it blew me away. So I'm still getting my act together over here. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, it took me back to that time. Um, and I, you know, I, what I thought about really was I never admitted to Eve during that time that I actually was really afraid. Um, and that really hit me tonight. But I was really afraid that she might not make it, but she did. So, thank God. Very. Um, could you take us back b before then and just tell us a little bit about how um, you and, and Eve came into contact and uh, uh, how, you know, and, and certainly in your case, um, V-Day came to be? Well, I think it all happens through art um, when it comes to Eve. Um, I met Eve after first seeing the vagina monologues. I had been working um, in the entertainment business and had had a political background and a kind of social justice background, but had kind of lost my way in it. And through working with artists, was starting to find my way back to connecting art and issues. And I saw the vagina monologues. And I always say to people, you know, the power of theater is so immense, um, and the power of art, and I knew that. I was someone who knew that. Um, but when I came to see the play, I had been kind of in the music business and was kind of off on another tangent, and I was very jaded. And I remember thinking, oh, okay, what's this gonna be? And it's gonna be a feminist play, and it's great, and it was getting all these rave reviews. And I sat there, and after a couple of minutes, and you know, she starts with John Mocks, I was worried, I bet you're worried. Um, I looked around, and I looked at the audience, and within, Three minutes in to the vagina monologues, an audience of women and men were on the edge of their seats. And I just said, wow. And then that was it. And as Perma said earlier today, the rest is history. You know, <laughs> saw the play, realized the connections, um, and then was part of a team of women all over New York who just came together. Eve was like, the play and I think Eve were kind of like this Pied Piper. And everybody kind of just was led to her apartment um, in Chelsea, in New York who was moved by the play and wanted to kind of help survivors, activists, political women, social justice women, peace women, I mean, all kinds of women who came together, um, young women, older women, and said, how can we help with this play? And that is how Vida began, with people coming together. Um, and I think you feel it in, in many ways with this play, because you see those comings together throughout the story um, and the people who surround Eve. So again, I feel like I'm kind of these layers of resonance I'm feeling tonight, but that's how I came to meet Eve is through her, through her art and through her plays. Um, I, I graduated from Barnard College in 1998, which is the year that V-Day was founded. So I knew about Eve, I think I remember seeing her on Oprah, I read about her, I was just captivated by her. I thought she was such a funny, charismatic person and the drive with which she wanted to do what she was setting out to do was really inspiring to me. And at the time that I met her, I was uh, an acting ED at a small uh, organization on the Lower East Side. And I was at a, a political fundraiser for Margarita Lopez, who was running for city council at the time. And Eve was there. 
and so was uh, someone else was there. Someone re introduced her. I remember. I think it was Gloria Steinem, and she said, "This woman's fucking amazing." Here's Eve Ensler, <laughs> and uh, and I I went up to eat afterwards, and I said, "You know, her vibe's so inspired by what you're doing." She said, "Just keep doing what you're doing," and uh, so I wrote to her organization to be there. <laughs> And I told them that I was an ED at, an organization, at a, a nonprofit, but I would love to volunteer for them. And they were like, what? I said, no, I'd love to volunteer for you. So I started volunteering about two or three days a week. Um, and we, got to, we all got to know each other. Fast forward a year or two later, um, Eve said, you know, I'm having this meeting at my house. Come. I went. And she said, what do you know about the Congo? <laughs> I was like, oh, I not much, you know, I, I know about what I read in the paper. She said, I have this, this project that I want to do about the, in, in the Congo, would you come work with me on this? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and I, I went to my job the next day and I gave my notice and I've been there a few days since. Amazing. <laughs> she has that way of <laughs> bringing people in. <laughs> Uh, you follow. Um, uh, February 14th of this year was the 20th anniversary of, of V-Day. Congratulations. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about what that, what that means for the organization and, and for you to, to be at year 20 and what, what the organization looks like today? I think it's been amazing to watch over 20 years. And again, like, like I think when you hear us talk about the play tonight, right, part of it is the his, you know, the kind of the arc of the play is within that 20 years. Um, so much has happened since women, you know, for, since Eve first started watching, you know, writing the play, performing it, Vide's formed, and this silence in this space was broken, right, when Vide first starts. Um, you know, fast forward now 20 years, you know, over $100 million raised by local women in their communities producing art you know, standing up, taking center stage in their communities. Um, so much has happened there where you've got women kind of changing the story in their own communities, and that's the, cat, you know, the catalyst of the vagina monologues in V-Day, and the different um, art and ideas that have come through V-Day has propelled that. And then we get to this moment, right, this Me Too moment, um, and this Time's Up moment, and you see the resonance, you see the work, you see the women before us, you see African-American women, first changed sexual harassment law in the US and made it so that it's a law um, and that, that those things can come to the fore. And so I think for all of us in V-Day, we've been talking a lot about what it means for this to be our 20th year, that it seems in some ways like so much of the catalyst of all the women who came before us, and Perva and I have talked about this, we both went to Barnard and Take Back the Night when I was at Barnard, way before Perva, um, had, had come and gone. And we actually brought it back when I was on campus. And that was actually, that was a big thing. So there's been these waves of movements, right? Um, and waves of change. Um, but for us right now, there is something about women who are, they're ready to not only tell their story, but they're ready to do it in a way that will just completely change the systems that are underlying how those stories came to be. Whether it's, you know, uh, patriarchy and sexual harassment in the workplace, um, but also systems, the systems that are happening, the, you know, the way the capitalist systems are excluding people, the way marginalized people can now come and are taking center stage and taking it. We're watching all that change happen. So I think in many ways, the 20th year for us has been a looking back and a looking forward. Um, and we're incredibly energized by this moment. Um, and I think it's, it's also, there's something about having this play happening now, too, that it's opening up um, a lot of different pathways in the activism. And our team is talking about things like the sacred feminine and how that's informing our work. Yeah, and I would just say that, you know, these are terrible, terrible times. And I think that there are forces at work that really want to uh, tear alliances and people who have been in solidarity apart. And V-Day is really an example of a movement that, it's an example of friendship. It's every year, the same people in these communities are getting together year after year to do this work, to benefit local organizations, to raise money, to raise awareness. And it's really an example, you know, as we go into our next decade, of, of that str strength um, that, that people have. 
And I think it's a reminder to like keep going and, and not to not give in to these evil people <laughs> that are out there. Um, and you know, One Billion Rising, Monique is here with us. Um, she's the global director of One Billion Rising, which is the, the baby of V-Day, um, is a great example of that. Um, <coughs> where we have activists all over the world uh, you know, fighting for justice on a, a variety of issues. Um, so, yeah. Congratulations, it's really extraordinary. Um, I want to focus on one specific aspect of your work in, in City of Joy uh, in the Congo, and we learned so much about uh, City of Joy in the play, um, uh, but that was many years ago. I'm wondering, can you update us on, on what's, what it's like there now and, and the progress and, and how it's going? So we're now six years in to City of Joy, almost seven. 13th, um, 13th class. Yeah. And over a thousand women have graduated. Um, those women are, you know, um, Perva, talk a little bit about what happens in their day-to-day -day there, like some of the programs that are happening. I mean, everything from, uh, you know, health classes where women are learning about their bodies and, um, and hygiene and reproductive health to um, agricultural training to computer science to English to literacy to political activism. Um, it, it just runs the whole gamut. It's, it's incredible. And what we're seeing out of that also is that, and you, you hear it in the play, is that this, this idea that the women at City of Joy needed a place where they could come to heal, to learn, and also learn leadership and, and, and practice their leadership. And we were just talking with our team in Congo and, and Mama C, Christine Schuller described her as an incredible activist out of Congo, um, and who is the director of City of Joy, the co-founder with Eve and Dr. Bugwege. Um, and also the director of Vide Congo um, about what those thousand women are doing. And the list is bankers, um, savings and loan, creating savings and loan cooperatives, journalists, nurses. Teachers. Teachers, many teachers. Um, workshop leaders in human rights, literacy, um, all kinds of um, working advocates for sexual violence survivors, the elderly, um, children. And basically what they've done is they've gone back and reflected what leadership looks like in a community. When you have, I guess what we would almost talk about is a social justice frame. Um, this idea of how do I go back, and that is part of the idea of City of Joy, is that you come in and there are 10 tenets of City of Joy and there's an agreement that you're gonna go back and teach um, what you've learned to your community. But to look at that list, it's literally just a reflection, right, of community. Um, so after this incredible six months there, the change that's happening that's driven by women, um, empowering themselves um, with, after spending six months with this incredible team that's there uh, running it day to day, it's, it's pretty magnificent what's happening. And I think we also see, and Perva talked a little bit about this moment we're in, that we see the resonance, right, of looking at what that change looks like, turning pain to power amidst incredible obstacles, what that can look like in a place like Congo, where politics are also incredibly difficult. Um, that uh, it gives uh, inspiration all over. Uh, I want to open it up uh, to, to questions, and uh, if you can speak loudly, just so we can hear you up here, uh, I will also repeat your question uh, into the mic. I think most people have had an oh shit moment, the way that she speaks about it. I don't know how, how she had the strength and how she has the strength to discuss and to share the way that she shares. She is so giving. Mm -hmm. And I, I was prepared for the play, but I was totally unprepared for her. Mm -hmm. She was just amazing. <laughs> Amazing. The, the comment was about um, how many people have had these sorts of experiences, but that the, the way that Eve describes the, the holy shit moment is, is quite stirring, and, and she's so uh, remarkable as, as a force, um, as you both um, well know. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've traveled around the world with her. We see how people respond to that. It is something that she, she's very generous in, in sharing what she's been through, and in spending time with people, um, sometimes in a group setting or sometimes one on one, and really just encouraging them to, to move forward. I was just in Bali, and this reminds me of this, and I got a chance to walk in the Indian Ocean. 
and the experience that she had with cancer, I worked with my cousin that had sort of the same experience. And it was astonishing how she talked about losing her hair because that was a big issue for my cousin. She became bald and she never wanted anybody to see her without the scar. So one day I walked in, I was visiting her, and she didn't have a scar on. And I says, well, gee, I'm glad that you allowed me to see you without your scar. Well, she cursed me out to high heaven. <laughs> and it was just a horrible experience for her. And we laugh about it now, but at that point, she went through it just like the actor did. And it's a special moment for people that have hair. And that whole experience of losing your hair and going through that whole process, not knowing whether you're going to, you know, survive or recover or if it's going to come, you know, reoccur again. So the way she portrayed the whole process of her going through the medication and all the surgeries and everything that she went was very, very awesome. Yeah, the, the comment was about uh, how Eve's, Eve's strength, particularly in losing her hair, uh, but in going through all the medication and the, and the processes. I'm wondering if, um, you know, as uh, friends who were, were very much around during that, you could talk about, you know, what, what, what that process was like. I know, hard. Uh, you know, uh, it's incredible to see someone who, who you know, Eve to me is a mentor, so I, I look up to her, and she, she always seems so invincible to me. To, so to see someone who's always going, who has so much energy, who's on all these flights, who's traveling everywhere, who's helping people to just be stopped in her tracks was a really incredible lesson for me, actually. Um, and it, it just taught me that, you know, you have to take care of your body. And you have to take care of yourself. Um, and then what I also remember from, from this time when we were all around her was like, we just laughed a lot too. There was, I mean, Eve is a very funny person. Tony Toast is a very, very funny person. Um, and I, I think, I just think back at some of the things that she was actually, if I think about what she was actually going through and the fact that we were laughing so hard, it's like, it doesn't make sense, but that was just a way of getting through moments. Um, and I think that comes across in this play, her, her sense of humor. Uh, yes. is what words of wisdom do you have to be able to keep that connection and um, you know, be present in that moment when people have you know, experienced so much and you know, keep that energy that I think is so indicative of her work? I think that one of the things we've seen is that, and it sounds like you've seen it also in your work, is that the shared experience of women um, you know, violence against women affects one in three women in the world, in the U.S. and the world. It's a CDC number, a World Health Organization number, and a U.N. statistic, and it's probably one of the most underreported um, types of violence. Um, but when women come together through shared stories, the connections are deep. Um, and it sounds like you had a shared story. Like, they're so deep, and you can find both the pain and the laughter, but also the transformation in it. And I think that, um, you know, so much of it is, is about also knowing, and I think we've seen this, and I think communities see this when they do things like produce the vagina monologues or create a One Billion Rising event, or even when communities of people come to see a play like tonight, is that everyone's at a different place. And if you can be open and, and consider that, and again, just even the way you asked the question, it sounds like you already know the answer. Um, but, you know, if you can consider that and have that openness for either the, you know, the healing or the, the humor, um, I think it seems like you find the place. And I think that's what we always, we kind of early on in Vida realized that, um, and a lot of times I think this is because of Eve's background in theater, um, <coughs> communities know themselves, right? Or groups of people know themselves. And when they come together, their power is so strong because of those shared connections and they find the connections. So I think that would be my, uh, you know, my thought on that. 
and just, yay, feminist self-defense. That sounds incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, we are unfortunately out of time, uh, but I want to thank you both so much for, for being here, and thank you so much for having me. If you'd like to listen to more of these uh, conversations, there's audio um, uh, and some video on the website uh, for the show. If you uh, Google in the body of the world, or you can find uh, the, the web address on your, um, on your programs. So uh, thank you for being here tonight. Have a good evening.